Zion. Zion, yeah, we got us hiking today. We're getting Zion, private Zion experiences. Even money can't buy that normally. since the last chicken has been a rampage actually since we woke up in Bryce Canyon and filmed the sunrise oh, that's right since then let's see we had breakfast I think we filmed a little bit about breakfast and then we drove we came to Zion yeah this is Zion National Park one of the most popular most beautiful amazing parks in the USA and really the world however it's extremely packed with people even now when there's a pandemic it's so crowded and logistically difficult on top of that we didn't sleep much last night so we had to go down the road and sleep in a room midday and it was also very hot so our hotel is actually in st george which is a city like a suburban town slash city it's a little bit out it's maybe 40 minute drive away from zion and it's uh it was intended to be our base <laughs> well they tell you 40 minutes but it's really more like over an hour so when we first got to zion it was about 12 noon and the light was actually really bright and washed out and the crowds there was just we couldn't find parking anywhere anyway so we just decided to leave go to st george take a nap and then we came back it's now seven it's almost seven, seven o'clock which means we don't have much light so let's get on this hike this is the riverside walk it's an easy hike for tonight yep two miles round trip yeah let's do this yep. and the main thing is that tomorrow we have a full day dedicated to zion however if our room is over an hour away that's not very practical so what yeah. we're gonna try to do is go to the nearest um, tourist town right outside zion springdale springdale yeah and then try to get a room for tonight hopefully it's not all booked so here's actually the reason we're here zion national park stunning scenery this is one of those that I don't know if the cameras can do it justice because you need like a fish eye. <laughs> well, we hit a GoPro. Susie's now an expert hiker. So about that funny story, yesterday we thought we added a three mile loop oh, to our yeah. hike mm -hmm. in Bryce Canyon and we took it and we struggled hard and we were like what is going on and now you checked into it and so one of the things that you should do <laughs> whenever you're hiking in an area that you're not familiar with uh, there's an app called all trails and it may be better in certain areas than others but in washington it's great utah i think it's also really accurate so i looked up that trail on all trails and a lot of people comment and they're like that mileage that they say is inaccurate <laughs> it's longer than you think so a word of caution if you're doing this peekaboo loop here it starts where it's flat and you get misled that it's a flat hike it is not so it's like up and up now and it keeps going and after the overkill yesterday we are now doing a flat hike utah definitely is probably the top destination for hiking because it has warmer weather than most of these alpine mountain states which are good for hiking mm -hmm. it also has the most diverse environment i've ever seen although one other thing about zion and hiking so while we were driving back neither of us did a lot of research about the hikes here because and it's kind of easy to see why when you look at all trails when you look at blog sites it's so hard to tell what trails are actually open yeah because quite a few of them like the most like even angels landing the most popular hike in this whole park they're saying that the end with, with like the chains where you get yourself up to the top and get the 360 views that part is closed mm, yeah so it's like you can't really plan around that Even this hike which is almost flat is off the charts cool, so cool. 
Everywhere you look, it looks so exotic and unique and amazing. Yes, and so crowded. A little trying bit. Trying to stay ahead of this really big group behind us. Look at this. There's a wall and plants are growing off it vertically. It's like nature's original vertical garden. Here is like a full-on vertical garden. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this is a totally overhead vertical shot here. Isn't this exotic or what? Utah. It's pretty cool. Oh, and by the way, I don't use the word awesome lightly <laughs> <laughs> because I like to follow the true meaning, which means it has to instill awe. Mm -hmm. And awe is not just cool or whatever. It's, it's fear and amazement in the same yeah. time. It's like me in the Milky Way. <laughs> I like it, but it's also kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we're wading through water now. That's the latest plan. What I'm gonna do is tie my shoes together and strap them to my bag and see what happens. Go cool, check it out. My black rapid camera strap became a shoe strap. The ironic thing is that we have Keens and Chivas that are totally suited for this. Know, right? But we didn't bring them, they're in the car right over there. The car, Whatever. But hey, it's a Utah experience wading through a canyon. So it's gonna hurt a lot. Let's do this. The stick should help you a lot. Sweet barefoot hiking time. Barefoot hiking, and I highly recommend these sticks. They came in really handy right there too. So yeah. Travel nice. with them. Someone like <laughs> <laughs> That a thing, serious. This honestly makes me happy hiking barefoot in me the. Me too. I was just gonna say that. I feel like a little kid again. Yep. Nice. Yep. It's just that my feet are size 12 now. <laughs> this is our reward. We are away from the crowd for once. So here is a bit tougher because the current is pushing much harder. When you take your feet off the ground it starts to swipe it, but not too bad. A puppy came out of the canyon. It's exploring. It's very fluffy and young. It's just a little more there where everybody's giving up where it gets to your waist or more. But um, this here is still, ooh, it's warm. It's warmer. We're the only suckers that don't have the proper shoes and we actually have them in the trunk. It's a lame thing. It starts pushing your feet, so you gotta really watch out. <laughs> nice view from here. I found a little dry spot in the middle of the river. On the side, I guess. Well, it's just us now. I know. See, I called it. I was like, I'm pretty sure. Once we get out there, all these yeah, better feeling this way. Yeah. There we go. The whole thing is ours. There's some people down there, but we don't gotta go all the way down there. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of just wanted it to be without crowds too, so. Yeah. It was worth it. Waiting in was worth it. See? <laughs> all 
All right, we hiked in. Actually, I don't know how far down the trail we are. It looks like it keeps going, but it gets the water level gets a lot deeper. So a lot of people are like up to their waist in water, which we are not prepared to do. <laughs> so we came pretty far. We saw a lot of it, and we're gonna start heading back. Yeah, and it's getting dark, so we gotta go. Zion, Zion. Yeah, we got us hiking today. Yeah, we did. We're at. 12,000 steps. Yeah, we've recovered okay. from, from yesterday's exertion. Yes, yeah, so we this, didn't burn in the heat. And this was supposed to be a recovery day. It is. Yeah, we're <laughs> soaked. We're making our way out. We'll see you on the other side. Well, hello. I bet people feed you. Oops, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. We solved our dilemma with um, the proximity to the park by booking another room and forfeiting a $58 booking, which wasn't a big deal, honestly. Yeah, so that hotel was over in St. George, and this one is like right outside of the one of the main entrances to Zion. Mm. It's in Springdale, and it's a La Quinta. It's actually a really mm. nice and really big hotel, and they had a room at the last minute. So yeah, we're actually thinking that we're lucking out because I think this would normally be high tourist season. It would normally be really busy, and it's not. Yeah, so we're here. We're going to get up for sunrise, and... We're dining on pizza in the room now. And that too was last minute. We managed to get it before yep. closing time. So we're Check feeling lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got up at six o'clock. The main area is way closed already, but we actually did that last night. So we wanted to do this canyon overlook and we got like the second to last spot at the parking lot at 6.30. That's how crazy this park is. So it's a relatively short and easy trail, just one mile, uh, pretty moderate, and it should give us a pretty cool view. But yes, uh, the main area is that area over by the Zion Lodge. That's where you get started with Angel's Landing and that Riverside Walk that we did last night and the Narrows. So, really glad we came and did it last night. But yeah, people say that they'll get there at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. and get the last spot in that Zion Lodge area. And when they fill up, they close off that road completely. So some people actually park outside and hike like three miles to your trailhead, which is kind of insane, but it shows you how popular that hike is. Zion and other has really hard or really easy hikes from, from the sound of it. A lot of the moderate ones are kind of vague. Uh, some of the trailheads aren't even marked. And some of the paths are really hard to follow. So it's kind of hard for us to plan the day. The reason why they closed off Angel's Landing, the top area, with the chains where you like, have to climb to the top to get the 360 views, they closed that off because these are contact surfaces for COVID and they have them here. So it's a really good thing. This trail is still open. This trail is already awesome. It's not even seven o'clock and the light is slowly filling the canyons. I, don't, I have shorts and I don't even have another proper shirt. I just have a t-shirt and a windbreaker and I'm feeling fine It's 60 degrees. So if you're moving, it's good. They did well here to put railing. We're getting Zion, private Zion experiences. Even money can't buy that normally. This is up to one third to one half as full as it normally is. So. <laughs> yeah, normally would oh, suck. Yeah. This is the hike right off a rock here. And over the edge is that. <laughs> I 
one of the cool things they said about this east side of Zion is that there's the technical canyons where you can only rappel into and it's like subterranean hiking at that point. It sounds amazing but you have to be prepared for that. Like anything we've ever seen. No, compared to last night, this is just different. Yeah, totally different. I love it. Look at these footprints. <laughs> How many people have been here? Yep. Yeah, now we're under the rock. It's very Incredible. sheltered. Incredible. Yeah, and this red light is reflecting. Yeah. It's so, difficult to shoot though. Oh my god. Yeah, it's hard. I can't get over how cool it is that we have parts of Zen to ourselves at times, and now it's rather exclusive. It's whoever risked coming here during the pandemic, that's who gets it. This is already one of the coolest trails I've been on. The terrain is just outworldly. I guess the fact that it was a ocean floor contributes to that. Really is the main factor here. Yeah, we're about to hit the view here and that's gonna be great because the light is not harsh yet. And we reach the overlook here. Wow, unbelievable. The view is blown out behind us for the GoPro viewer. We're taking better photos, mm -hmm. but right now we're seeing the canyon under us. It's so, it's so cool. It's amazing, and it is 7.20. So the light is pretty harsh, so you do want to be shooting either raw or brackets or both to be able to get this uh, shot, but yeah, amazing. Yeah, GoPro doesn't do it justice because the middle dark shadow there is huge, mm -hmm. but uh, with the camera you can fix that. Mm -hmm. So apparently, uh, according to the sign, this whole canyon was eroded by the Virgin River, which is what we partially hiked through last night. So it was a lot bigger at one point. Let's see what happens if I climb this rock. Yeah. I don't understand where this water is coming from. It looks like coming out of the wall because everything around it is bone dry and there's no sign of a flow here. So we just have a little drip on this section right here and it keeps, it reaches that far and it dries out. So where is it coming from? I don't know. I'm eyeing a very cool looking checkered mountain so I'm gonna try to climb it. Let me give you the key so I don't lose it. I have a copy of the key which is a very good idea when you're hiking. <laughs> Make right. sure both people have keys to the car. <laughs> what a cool mountain. It's 
amazing to me how quick elevation gains. So much fun, Zan. The best place for hiking so far. The hard part with this is always going down. The mountain, or yeah, this rock is rather smooth. So. The good thing is my shoes are gripping hard. It's It's got texture, it's not slippery. Yeah, I'm in the clear now. All right, so we're gearing up for this hike and Utah sun is supposed to be pretty awful. So if you don't like using sunscreen, I don't like sunscreen because it gives you that kind of sticky feeling and I sweat a lot. So I almost guaranteed to like sweat it off immediately. So I have these sun sleeves that I got from REI and I actually got them for our trip to Belize last year. But you put them on like this and they give you like I think SPF 50. So we're pretty much hitting everything we want in Zion because we did our popular hike last night we got in and then this morning we did the overlook mm -hmm. which was great yeah. and now we're here we're doing one which is supposed to be very uh, basically on your own and it's called Clear Creek and you're basically at the bottom where it's sandy and there was no river anymore so you're just walking through X River. <laughs> So this hike is unmarked, as it turns out many on the east side of Zion are. And we had to ask the ranger where to enter it and she told us you can enter it in many places, but this one is a good one. And there appear to be many footprints, so people are doing it, so we're gonna follow them. And this is the stunning scenery as we're doing that. Yes. And it looks like it may actually be uh, shaded. I did read about this uh, trail on all trails and um, people said it's really great and it's also kind of shaded so that you're not gonna be blasted by sun all day. There are some trails where people say there's no shade. So you wanna plan accordingly if you're gonna do one of those. This is not the better way, here we go. Gotta use some old school pathfinding here with no trail. Oh, you are very good at that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can do off trail and path finding. Yeah, I'm like, I need a clear cut trail, so <laughs> luckily one of us is not like that. It comes down to several things to do that well. One is you have to work over time with your mind to remember all the things and process all the information around you. The other one is you have to know your limits of your body really well. Yeah. So you like look out and see, hmm, maybe I can do that and go and do it and how. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, is you have to have superb memory and fitness really <laughs> following footprints here trying to take me to the sandy river bed or creek bed that is actually our hike there's signs of that here there's sand and there are many footprints so i'm thinking this is the trail right here actually and yes here's the mountain that we need to look for and in the case of hiking totally okay if not preferable to go where other people have gone. <laughs> Unless you're Lewis and Clark. And this is it. This was the target. The unmarked trail which we had to find here is like 10 degrees cooler if not more. And now what we gotta do is remember this place. There are two trails f coming out here. So that's a really good one to remember. Yeah. All right, so now our hike is this gorgeous crevasse that the creek used to run through. Wow, yeah, this is cool. This is our hike right here. And it goes for a while. She told us you can enter it and exit it and do whatever you want, as long as you find your place where you parked. But yeah, this is the hike itself. The best part about it is that the temperature is so much cooler, so you can do this when you can't do the other stuff, when it gets 90 degrees in the shade. You don't want to be in the sun at that point. No. Here's the mountain and a non-existent river 
bed <laughs> or the bed exists but the river doesn't and it even has sand so it's like a beach with just without the water so here's the proof that you can have Zion to yourself if you do the right thing maybe it takes coming through a global pandemic but you can <laughs> Yeah, and you know, you could apply this to just about anywhere that's natural. Of you know, you're gonna have your popular spots that everybody goes to, but usually you'll have some smaller, uh, and in the case of Zion, it's unmarked trails yeah. that are worth checking out because they're amazing and no one else is here. Here, this canyon wall is so cool, amazing texture and colors. I'm taking a dark little side canyon just to see what it's like. It's a little dark for GoPro, but whatever. Oh, it's really wet. Wow, it's like a swamp. Oh, this is totally legitimate for hiking, no? You can keep on hiking here, off trail. And in fact, there are steps, huh? Yeah, that's the trail. And you can cross this river thing again and go there. Keep on hiking for a bit at least. And it's much greener, much more moisture is preserved here. It's like a little forest oasis. Hiking off trail in Zion, even just for a little bit. People do it and that's how they discover the good stuff. But yeah, this now it becomes like a little forest and it's full of obstacles but you can keep going and chew it on out Good. if I had more time I would keep going all right out in the main canyon now it goes for a while and it's really green and there's water did you get it in your hand? I think you have the pole, but more than that, you have the courage and the confidence. Well, you clear your mind, right? Like I can feel sometimes where your, your mind is like, no, that's dangerous, I can't do it. So if you just kind of turn that off and you're like, just focus on a word, I think that's a good one. That's good for running too. So we've been seeing evidence of bears and this could be their tracks. They're kind of round and clustered possibly, or some other thing here left footprints it looks like, cause there are a lot of them. And also their lizard track going right through here. Which you can tell by dragging the tail and then also having feet on the side of the continuous line. sheep the desert sheep that we've been seeing on the signs and we've been looking for sheep for like eight years since glacier national park so we finally found oh them. look they're oh, uniting the they're uniting all right so as we were walking back and we're pretty close to where we started we realized that we walked right by this cave <laughs> that we did not notice the first time it's man-made it seems to cross the under the road Wow. Right. Yeah, I see the light this way. Yeah. This is what a minefield looks like. Square tunnel. Oh, 
we're chilling out with some huckleberry ice cream from Hoodoo's Market and it is very refreshing right now. There's also a grass cutter so apologies if there's noise. <laughs> this is a really quiet one actually, I've heard much worse. Yeah, so we just did a lot. We did two hikes since 6 in the morning and we got amazing views all the way through. Of all the parks, I think it actually takes the most planning and we did probably the least planning for this park, but we still managed to make it work. Yeah, we were strategic about it and we explained some of our strategy earlier, but it comes down to not going to the peak places at the peak times mm -hmm. because that's just a no-go. We were there at 6 ish in the morning, 6.30 I think, and the guy was like, shut already closed, nothing uh, for several hours and we just went by at uh, uh, 1 p.m. And there still was no entry. Yeah, it's a Friday today too. So yeah. we went yesterday, Thursday, and it was much, much easier. I think I read that Wednesday tends to be the least crowded, but don't bother on a weekend or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> not yeah. worth it. <laughs> but there's a reason it's this popular and it's simply stunning. It's just words do it, no justice. Pictures don't do it justice. You really have to come see it and do it properly. I think we kind of came to that conclusion of, you know, the name Zion and it's like a religious experience being here. And it really is, yeah. yeah. If you have the right perception open, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. definitely will feel it. It's the best. Uh, we, and we've hiked Glacier and we've hiked the Dolomites, but this is just next level. Next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely worth the stop. Yeah. And plan properly, plan well. We'll now look for some food and go rest near the pool and take a nap and we may even do a little hiking later tonight. Drove all day through the desert, stopped at Lake Powell, and now we're at a really special place because as long as I walk through this invisible line in the sand right here, I'm in Arizona. But as soon as I turn around this way where we're parked, and you see the big Welcome to Utah sign, and this is exactly where the start of Monument Valley is. 